Hello, how is it going? My name is Fake Hero and welcome to Legends of Runeterra. This video is going to be your starter guide to show you where to go and where to begin and what to focus on when you open up the game. But it's going to be a little bit overwhelming for some newer players with a whole lot of information being thrown at you left, right and center. This is just going to make it a lot more easier for you to understand and like give you the tools to kind of pick up the game and know what to focus on and kind of like what you might want to proceed doing. Uh, this is not going to cover every subject. I am going to be doing separate videos on some more in-depth topics, but this realistically will give you the tools to begin and know what to focus on. So I really do hope you enjoy and if any of this information you found useful, a like is greatly appreciated. You guys have a great day. Enjoy. So once you eventually boot up the game, name your in-game name, you're going to come up with this uh, tutorial that's pretty much mandatory, you can't skip it, it's just going to teach you the most fundamental mechanics of any card game, uh, very relevant information if you've never played any TCG, digital, traditional, whether it be. Uh, so you go ahead, you breeze through this, and then once you've completed this, you kind of come, up, you come into another uh, tutorial bit, but this is a more recent edition, it's the Path of Champions, so this is actually the single player content that is uh, optional, you can do it. In this situation, we've just got to breeze through this path of the champions, uh, it teaches you a few things, and then once you get past this, here's where we get into like the main menu where we can proceed from there and look at uh, some of the other goodies we can get past. Cool, so we've made it into the main menu. This is going to be your battleground for everything you need to do. This is what you're typically going to see when you open up the game. Uh, you're going to have a few tabs here. We'll go through them very briefly. This is going to be your home page. This is where you collect your weekly vault. Your weekly vault is going to be your uh, resource management week to week. So we're going to get some great goodies. On, the more you play, the greater the vault, the more cards, champion cards, wild cards, etc. You'll receive. So it's very important that you at least log in once a week, even if you're playing casually to collect whatever you've earned so far. And even if you miss like the actual weekly vault day, you can collect it at any point. It doesn't really matter gonna have some login rewards so these are going to be goodies for when you first start playing the game very generous you're gonna get a lot of good stuff here and it's gonna help you to like build decks and get to where you want to be very quickly it doesn't take you long to build a competitive deck at all you've just got to play for a couple of weeks get enough uh, resources and you can build one of your own but yeah you're gonna open up your day one capsule you're gonna get some uh, a rare wild card and a few other cards right there Heading over to the play page, uh, the first thing I really want to recommend you guys do is at least browse over, do a couple of the challenges. They're going to earn you XP, which is going to level up your account and get you more rewards. And everything's just all about XP and leveling up and getting rewards. Uh, these challenges are basically going to teach you almost all the fundamental mechanics in the game. And as new stuff comes out, they release new challenges, kind of teaching you the ins and outs of, you know, all of the new mechanics, all the new keywords and stuff. Everything that you need to know about how the cards roughly work. Heading over to your collection. This is going to be where you stockpile all of your decks. And basically, just this is where you edit your decks, build decks, etc, etc. You're going to get a bunch of uh, beginner decks from your rewards. So if we go to the rewards, we have our pro log. This is going to be something that's only like for newer players. You go through your pro log, you're going to unlock a few decks to start off with, which is very generous. Then you start to unlock some pretty cool stuff like a Poro. It's going to be your new friend for a very long time. And as you keep going through, you unlock more and more and more. It just doesn't take you long to start building your own decks, guys. So just give it a go. Play a bit and you'll get there in no time. Heading back over to the collection, though, we can also click on the cards tab. It's going to show you your cards. You can browse your cards here. You can also show unowned cards from your uh, collection by kind of highlighting the tab there. So you can go show unowned. You're going to see all the beautiful cards in Runeterra that we don't quite have yet. A uh, bunch of cosmetics. Pretty much as it goes on. And go back up to the top here. Because this is going to be your quests. You're going to have your prologue quests and then you're eventually just going to unlock your traditional daily quests. Uh, great to be doing these. Uh, or semi-focusing on them. You don't have to really focus on them too much. Like, I'd probably ignore the... Unless you want to play Path of Champions, I would not be too concerned about the Path of Champions stuff, but you can unlock some pretty cool cosmetics as you progress through. Uh, just focus on these prologue quests at first. This is going to be a fastest way to earn resources to start building your own decks, which I know is what most players want to do. They just want to build their own decks. Go ahead and focus on these challenges. Get that XP. Get through the rewards path. 
get through this. Once you've done the prologue, you can start focusing on each and each individual region, because uh, this will be the final thing you unlock, the region roads, which is pretty much where you'll focus on like a region by region, unlocking XP for those if you want to specifically find cards for that region. So here we are guys, we've completed the prologue quests. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock the region roads now. And here's where the real the real journey is going to begin. Whoa, look at that. So currently, how much do we have? Is it eight? Eight regions we have. Play games to unlock each region's rewards. You can select different region at any time. So you have the ability to switch whenever you want and focus on one region. So basically you're going to unlock cards specifically from that region all your chests all your champion cards etc etc are going to give you rewards based on the region you've selected change region at the top left you'll get cards from the region you select earning xp keep playing so you can complete them all eventually you just go ahead and complete them all um as time's gone on and more and more regions have come out and as the new players are coming in later into the game they're actually giving you an xp boost on some of the old regions not the most recent ones but the old ones you get an XP boost and it, it makes you go through them a lot faster than the new ones. So I'd recommend when you first begin, the featured one's Bandle City. Bandle City is probably permanently going to be like the newest region now as we have all regions unlocked. Uh, I'd just go ahead and work through, depending if you wanted to, work through the older regions to start building your fundamental collection and these will go a lot faster than doing Bandle City. So for example, let's pick, what's one of my favorite regions? I like Taiwan. I'm going to activate Targon. And notable champions from this region, Tarek, Aurelian Soul, kind of gives you a little glimpse idea. Press on the champions for more info and stuff like that, it's really good. So as you can see here, we've selected Targon and we have our, the little green thing along here, line, is showing you how much XP boost you are uh, uh, getting towards that region. So what I'd recommend for a lot of newer players is that when you're working through these, I would work up until you get to the end of the XP boost and then change region and go to another one and utilize the XP boost because this is going to be your fastest way to get cards and resources as quickly as possible. Now speaking about resources, I think it's going to be worth for me to kind of teach you about what the resources are in game. We have the store, let's just ignore that for a moment. Uh, the Riot Coins here, this is going to be your paid Currency, basically you can use this to unlock a whole bunch of stuff, including, but not limited to, cards. So you can actually use IRL money to get cards if you wanted. I will recommend that you don't unless like you feel comfortable doing that um, because you are going to unlock cards very quickly, guys. You're gonna be, be able to build competitive decks in no time. But just to teach you what we have here, we have champion, wild cards, epic, rare, common. These are all the rarities of cards in the game. Uh, and each of them has a bit more of a value towards how rare they are. Champions are going to be champions, epics, wares, and wilds. And you'll kind of have like your little inventory of how much you have just here. So you can use these to essentially unlock any card of that rarity. It is as simple as that. Heading back over to the homepage, we also have shards. Shards can be currently used to also craft cards based on their cost. Again, similar to the rarity, it's going to vary depending on uh, the rarity, the shards that you have to spend towards them. For example, a champion wild card is going to be worth 3,000, but you don't unlock the wild card, you just unlock the card itself. We also have the essence here, which is used to craft uh, prismatic cards. Speaking about prismatic cards, if we go over to our cards, have a look at one of our cool cards here. Right click on that. You have a little option, you have your options here where you can prismatic it with IRL money or essence to make it all nice and shiny. We also have the skin selection here and stuff like that. So look, I think I've shown you a few of the fundamental things in the game right now. And realistically, it's like, well, what do we do next? What should I focus on? And that's where it really comes down to your preference. Maybe you're ready just to play some single player content. Uh, maybe you're pretty much just being chilling, playing a couple of AI games. What I will recommend and what probably people are gonna try and figure out as soon as they get into it is like, well, I'm ready to play ranked. I want to build decks and stuff well uh head over have a quick keys at your quest log here because you're not going to have ranked unlocked immediately you want to come down to this unlock expeditions uh this little quest line that's one out of two you'll do the uh play 10 games you'll unlock expeditions and i'm pretty sure to play another 10 games and you'll unlock ranked ranked won't be available to you immediately but then once you've done that ranks ready to go 
Maybe you're ready to like start building your own decks immediately if you don't want to use the ones that are offered to you. Pretty simple, we can go over new deck, come in here, we have all other collections, we can go through sort, sorting by regions, uh, also a little filter, sorting by card type, rarity, mana cost, everything you need to do to like simple it down as much as possible. Maybe you want to build a Piltover and Zorn and Shadow Isles deck. You have all the cards available to you here, including again, show unowned. We can look at some of the cards that we don't have. Maybe we want Poro Cannon. Oh, this card's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and craft one. Put that into my deck. Uh, I think it's simple enough for newer players that maybe are just trying to still get a grasp of the game. Go ahead, play some of these, uh, play some of these uh, pre-built decks and see what feels comfortable for you. I'm going to recommend the Scouts and Scullywags. That's a pretty good one, I reckon. Also, you can go Death and Spiders. This is going to be like one of the cookie cutter go-to early game budget decks that you can adjust some of the cards in this list eventually and climb effectively with this deck. Maybe you want to play some spells and stealth. It's really all up to you guys. You have a generous amount of champions to begin with and you can find your playstyle that suits you. Once you do eventually uh, play your 10 games and unlock your expeditions. Expeditions are kind of like your arena from Hearthstone. It's like your kind of draft mode where you uh, collect cards and you build a deck, adjust the deck as you go. It's very cool, very similar to a single player experience. Um, I recommend playing one of these a week when you first start. You do get a nice uh, bag of resources after completing one expedition, whether you win or lose. The more, you, the better you play, the better the rewards, but it's a good way to also boost your uh, resource economy very quickly. And if you're not too fast, you wanna build one competitive deck, you'll probably have enough to get there after you know a week of playing. You can go straight into your rank games and start climbing. Just keep focusing on these quests and it's going to like give you the amount of XP that you need. All the XP goes towards your, as I said, your region roads to unlock more resources very quickly. In no time, you'll be playing and becoming a Legends of Runeterra uh, master. And this right here is, uh, this is going to be the expedition. So adventure awaits. Uh, so you're going to be drafting a deck as you go uh, and then Trying to overcome as many opponents as possible. The more wins you get, the better your rewards will be. So let's go ahead and embark. So you can actually use a bunch of resources here. I always just recommend playing this when you have the tokens available. You just want to be saving these resources for obviously, you know, crafting more cards. As you can see, I have 73 tokens. Now, I don't really play Expedition. I have just a tremendous amount of shards. Just I have a little bit of riot points because I do buy some cosmetics, but just ignoring that. The amount of resources I have here is realistically enough to craft almost like a full expansion upon release you eventually get to that point where you just has, have an absurd amount of resources so yeah you don't have to spend money on this game there's another point i really wanted to make let's go ahead and draft with a new uh use one of our tokens we'll go ahead and draft here so we can we get two trials so you get two chances it's not just one run you're pretty much paying uh, uh one token for two runs which is amazing begin trial so here's where you're pretty much going to have the entire collection of Runeterra cards in your pool available to add to your deck and craft it as you go. I mean, I recommend definitely have, have playing a few of these when you first start. Good way to get resources and a good way to try out new champions that obviously you may not have unlocked. I'm going to go ahead and pick Draven here. I think uh, aggressive decks can be typically pretty good in a drafting format. And alongside Draven, oh, let's grab Teemo. Really just walk down our opponent. And yeah, you pretty much just keep going, collecting all the stuff that you need to do to add to your deck. And yeah, I'm just going to skim through this really quickly. As you can see, it shows you like your mana curve etc. How many uh, of this cost card, etc, etc, etc. Sometimes it could be a good idea to try and fit in some cards of certain costs that you may or may not already have, just to kind of make your deck a bit more smooth and a bit more effective on curve, which is really important for drafting formats. Quick tip would be to like focus on getting those cards out on curve. Some combat tricks, some followers, we'll add them in. Add a little bit of top end. And now you're gonna get like your little trade picks at the end. You can skip this trade, or if you kind of have an idea to like adjust that deck just a little bit further, maybe we want more combat tricks like give an ally plus three plus two at burst speed. And we can get rid of this slow, uh, fast speed roar of the Slayer. 
Let's go ahead and accept that trade. And you're pretty much going to get to this page here. So, and then we're going to play. If you win your first one, you get to select a new champion to add to your deck. And you go for as long as you can to try and win. Alternatively, if you want to, and I could recommend this to some players, um, if you don't really want to play Expedition, but you do want to get a little bit of resources every week, you can actually go ahead and surrender. Trial complete. We can just retire and claim if we want to. Because no matter what, at worst, you're always going to get an epic capsule. And this is going to give you just an epic card, some shards if you have already unlocked the card, and you're good to go from there. Now you can only get uh, you can only get capsules from a certain amount of expeditions every week. I'm pretty sure it may or may not just be one. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, if you want to embark on another one, you know what to do. Boom, straight back into it. I do recommend that you do give the expedition a go and see how well you can do. Because sometimes, and some people might really enjoy it, and it might be your kind of style. Gauntlet, this is going to be like a mini tournament uh, each and every week. With some weeks it being off, uh, you can go for your Prime Glory. This might be a little bit overwhelming at first. All you're going to know here is enter the tournament. You're going to pick uh, three decks that cannot uh, combine the same regions or same champions. So you can't do like three decks with Narsus. And then you can't do three decks with Shadow Isles and Shurima either. So they have to be relatively unique. You can, however, make three Shadow Isle decks splashing another region if you wanted to. So we'll go ahead and pick three decks I like here. That don't overlap champions. Go ahead and we can confirm them. And then you'll play to try and win your Prime Glory. Prime Glories will all add up. So towards the end of the season, there'll be a last chance gauntlet. And for every Prime Glory you've collected along the way, you'll get like one free win towards that. And if you manage to win that, you'll be able to enter into the seasonal tournament as well. Now you can either qualify for the seasonal tournament through being a top 700 master player or by winning the last chance gauntlet. And it all comes down to realistically winning that last chance gauntlet as soon as possible as well. I've collected a couple of prime glories which carry over between seasons. So you can always use them, like collect them as you go. And like maybe you don't play in the last chance gauntlet this time, but you'll at least have those prime glories for the next time you get a chance to be in there. So it's really cool. A really good way for newer players to actually get involved in these massive tournaments that may or may not have much time available to grind it out to masters every time. But you might just be a really good player and you can go ahead and really jam out. Look guys, I just want to once again welcome you to the game. I am super glad you're here. I'm glad you finally made it and giving Legends of Runeterra a go. It's honestly just a great game and I hope this video helps to kind of get you off the feet and give you an idea of like what you may or may not just want to start doing in the game. Um, I'm going to do a couple more separate videos, one for deck building and decks and stuff, and then one also just on uh, mechanics and more gameplay focused things. But if you enjoyed it, a like is greatly appreciated. Subscribe and just leave a comment if you have time. If you want to come say hi to me on my Twitch, please do. I'd really love to hear from you. Uh, you guys just have a great day, man. Just <laughs> really excited, dude. Thank you so much.